Good morning everybody. My name is Crystal. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Good morning. It is Tuesday morning. Um, Alexa, good morning. Good morning. On this day in 1979, people were logging onto the internet's predecessor for the first time. Users of this nifty new service, Micronet, could access email, run programs and read news, but only after 6 p.m. Alexa, what's the time, please? Good morning, Crystal. It's 8.18 a.m. Alexa, what's the date today? Today is Tuesday, the 24th of September. Alexa, what's the weather outlook? In Rochester, it's 13 degrees Celsius with cloudy skies. Today's forecast calls for more of the same, with a high of 17 degrees and a low of 10 degrees. Would you also like the current humidity? Yes. At the moment, the humidity is 96%. Very, very humid. Alexa, can you tell me a joke? What do you call a hobbit in Nando's? Lord of the Wings. Alexa, whose birthday is it today? Today's famous birthdays include Joe Locke, American mass shooter and former student of Stoneman Douglas High School Nicholas Cruz, American professional wrestling personality Stephanie McMahon, American actor, director and producer Kevin Sorbo, and British comedian Jack D. Alexa, how old is Jack D? Jack Dean died on the 23rd of June 1950 at the age of 75. Alexa, how old is the comedian Jack D? This might answer your question. Jack Barakat is 36 years old. Right. Jack D is a comedian and he's still alive. Alexa, how old is Jack D? This might answer your question. Jack Taylor died on the 2nd of July 2016 at the age of 94. So we're just getting a load of Jacks here. Um, Jack D is not dead. Alexa, good morning. Um, so the weather is uh, dull, but the humidity is high. So it's warm, but the weather is like Sorry, I damp. don't know that one. It's damp. Um, I don't know if it's, it doesn't look like it's been raining um, overnight. It just looks really dull and dark outside. Um, so, yeah. Yesterday, um, yeah, it's trying to keep yourself above water when you feel like you're sinking. Well, it is for me at the moment. A scammer has caused my bank card to be... Um, closed and I have gone without access to money to my bank since last Monday. I was told my card would be here within seven to ten days. Seven days have gone already. There is no bank card. No, none. Last time this happened was two months ago and the bank uh, said they sent the card out. I waited ten days. There was no card. Um, the bank told me to ring the um, Royal Mail. The Royal Mail told me, you, you know, that there really wasn't anything wrong with the post. And um, the card never arrived. So I rang the bank again and they said they'd send another card out. The second time the card was supposed to have been sent out, I received the card very quickly. So... I don't know what's going on. The same thing is happening again. And it's not only happened to me, it's happened to someone in Liverpool. In the Liverpool Echo, there is a piece about somebody going through exactly the same thing. And the bank just tell you to ring action fraud um, and things like that. Fortunately for me, the fraud was stopped. No one actually took anything because it was stopped the bank the bank told me something was being taken out and I stopped it so my money my money's in there I can't get access to my money 
because they've closed my card down and the dig digital card won't work so you 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 have to wait till the card comes so you have to go without money not because you haven't got any but because your card's been closed down and you you have to wait for the new one so these scammers have caused me so much misery this year um, apparently whoever's doing it, it keeps trying to do it all the time to me so I was told it could be a connection with the old card and they said they'd try harder to stop it from happening again and I, I don't know what to do apart from not order things online if that's how it's happening um so i've been left without money and i've been relying on my mum who is sending me money out in the post and obviously i was sent some money out this is again what happened last time the money didn't come Um, it's like someone is trying to make me go up and see my mother. And I'm not a child, I'm an adult. So every time I don't go up and see my mum, my mum, someone's doing this to me for some reason. Or it's coincidences. But, I mean, I don't know what to do now. I, I don't know what to do. So my electricity is on emergency credit. I've got some cash. And I'm leaving it to the last moment because at the end of the day, if the money doesn't come from my mum, it's a toss up between putting the electricity on the meter uh, and having food for me and my pets. And that is the truth. That's the truth. So, the... We're just going to go out and look at the electricity meter and see what's on it. Uh, and I, I honestly, I'm, I'm just bamboozled as to why the bank can't stop this and why this keeps happening. Um, I told you last night someone tried a scam on my phone about a fake parking ticket and I don't drive, I don't have a car so I saw through that one immediately trying to frighten me with a parking ticket and I don't have a car I think they've got the wrong person I think they're trying to attack the wrong person I don't drive and I never have done it was my father that had a car my fa father drove for most of his adult life. I've, I've never driven a car. So someone is, is like really attacking me and, and trying to, to break me to pieces by the look of it. So I've woken up this morning. I'm, I'm trying to like keep going, as you do. And, and um, we'll see what happens today. But it's like somebody wants me in my home with no electricity, nothing to eat. And what happens if you don't eat and you've got no electricity? It's a good job that I've, I've, my mum is helping. It is. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't let it get that far. Obviously, I'm not going to go without food and electricity course I'm not there are steps you can take if anyone finds themselves in the same position as me if you get to a point where you've got no money um, there are, are places you can go to to get food and help with your electric there are um, there's such things as food banks and the citizens advice bureau can direct you in the right place for help the Citizens Advice Bureau is in Gillingham, mine is, 
it's in Kingsley House where my mother used to go for her mental health checkups. Kingsley House, um, I went up there with my mum and dad for one of my mum's mental health appointments. Kingsley House in Gillingham, it's where the Citizens Advice Bureau is. And my mum went there for her mental health checkups. Because I went with her and my dad on one occasion. So I told you, I think someone is doing this to me and they're thinking they've got my mother. And my mother plainly said to me yesterday, she said, this is all aimed at me, Janestra. She said, it's all aimed at her. But why is it happening to me? Why are they targeting me if it's meant for my mother? Well, all these places are mental health places where my mum went to. The guy at my previous residence that um, was a horrible man and he... He invited me into his flat for a cup of tea. He said, um, I've seen you going up and down the road. So you've always got your earphones on. Uh, I, I, I have my earphones on for a reason. So things like that didn't happen. I was out by the bins at my previous res residence. And this man called Dave came up to me and said, Oh, what are you doing? I, I couldn't breathe because they were painting the flat opposite me. They were painting it. And I've got the hypersensitivity to smells. So the flat opposite me was being painted. And I, I, I went outside to get some air because I couldn't breathe. And it was about 8 o'clock at night outside. And this Dave person came out to me. And he went, oh, what are you doing behind the bin like that? And I went, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just getting some fresh air. Fresh air. He went, oh, I've seen you walking up uh, New Road. He said, uh, you've always got your earphones on. I went, yeah, I like music. He went, um, would you like to come in for a cup of tea? And he appeared to be quite normal and nice. And I went back to his flat for a cup of tea. And um, we had a cup of tea and a chat. And he went, let's go for a walk. So he took me for a walk, basically. He gave me his coat. He said it's cold outside. So he put one of his coats on me and some gloves. And we went walking up the main stone road. And I didn't know this guy. Didn't know him. I'd seen him coming in and out of the flats, I didn't know him, and we walked up the road, Maidstone Road, and there's a place called um, Elmsley House, and that is another place where my mother went for a mental health checkups with my father Derek, because I went in there with as well, and there was a, a picture of Charles and Camilla in there, Charles and Camilla in Elmsley House. Because I remember going in there and um, my mum had said that she told her workers about my father's behaviour and they'd done nothing about it. They'd done nothing to help my mother about my father's violence towards her. So I was carted around. This Dave took me into Elmsley House car park and tried to kiss me. And I didn't know him. I didn't know him. And he went <clears throat> and he said, I've got proper, I've got a, a place uh, we can go to in Devon. He said, if you scratch my back, I'll scratch your, yours. And he started talking about prostitutes. And we went out with a woman that died of cancer and she was a prostitute. And um, I knew I'd made a mistake. I didn't want to be involved with this man. I tried to humour him to get home because I was afraid. There was young men walking about smoking drugs. I was afraid to get home on my own. So I humoured this guy to take me home. 
this Dave said he loved me, he went, I love you. I went, I've got to go home. I went home to my flat. The next day, this Dave rang the buzzer. He went, um, come down, come down. So I went down and it was becoming unbearable. He was acting like a nutcase. He was grabbing me by the chin. There's nothing wrong with me. I went back to my flat and um, the next time he rang the buzzer, I said, I'm not very well. I, I, I don't want to come down. I'm, I, I'm not well. He went, oh, okay. And then the Monday afterwards, he, he gained access to the flats. I didn't let him in. One of the neighbours let this Dave into the building. He came up the stairs. He started banging the door. He went, you said I could come in. He was covered in aftershave. You went, said I could come in. I went, no, I didn't. I went, no, I didn't. You're not coming in. He said, you scatty cow. And he, he had his heavy boots on, tall bloke. And he buggered off. And he never spoke to me again. But one of the neighbours let him into the building. I think it was the lady downstairs. She let this, she let this guy into the building. One of the neighbours let him in and I had to deal with his, he, he, he was trying to get into my flat and I've got some potatoes for you. Um, I wouldn't go out of my flat for three days because this guy was intimidating. I wouldn't go out of my flat for three days. So um, Jessica Haslam, uh, one of the workers for MHS Homes, came round with an in Asian policeman and they came into my flat and they I, I, I wouldn't go I, I was st stuck in my flat for three days scared to go out it was a mess it was a mess um, they didn't do anything so the housing and the police saw the state of the flat they did fuck all to help me they told me you can't stay indoors you've got to go outside they weren't interested in my welfare. They all they was interested in, you've got to go outside. You've got to go out. No one referred me for help. No one uh, saw the state I was living in because I would I'd shut myself in for three days. I didn't have anything. I, I didn't go to the shop or anything. Nobody helped me. Um, basically, I. Uh, forced myself outside and pulled myself together. I was told that I told her what that this Dave had done, and I was told he's mentally ill. Um, just ignore him. He's got. He must have a mental health illness. By the police. He went on to go out with heroin addicts. And they were injecting drugs into the into his block of flats. They were injecting drugs into their legs on the stairs of the flats. Because the police did nothing with this bloke, he went on to keep bringing drug addicts into his flat and they would inject drugs with young girls in the building. Children. The police's failure to act or do anything led to that bloke uh, bringing drug addicts it back into the building and one of the ladies had in there spoke to me and she said that Dave what was letting drug addicts inject themselves on the communal stairs and drug addicts were trying to bang the door down trying to get their fix from this bloke and that's what happened after I'd reported his what he'd done to me to the police they did absolutely nothing and um, he was bringing drug addicts into the building my previous address so every time I see a bloke with a bicycle and an elephant Sainsbury's bag it reminds me of that Dave because that's what he used to do ride around on a bicycle with elephant uh, Sainsbury's bags on the bar handle. See you later.